Hello, and welcome to today's Vision Board Goal Setting Workshop. My name is Lisa Corum, and I'm the Financial Wellness Program Manager here with Desert Financial. And I'm happy to walk you through talking about what a vision board is, talk about how to use a vision board, provide you with some vision board examples, and end this webinar with the start of creating your very own vision board. So let's get started. What is a vision board? A vision board is a tool used to create and maintain focus on what truly matters to you. Literally, a vision board is any sort of board on which you display images that represent whatever you want to be or do or have in your life. It also allows you to take a holistic approach to goal setting. You'll see what I mean in a moment. A vision board can help with your overall approach to goal setting. It can act as a launching pad, allowing you to brainstorm and narrow down what you choose to focus on while still allowing you to see other future goals. So let's talk about some of the things that you see on this vision board. You see that there are a lot of words on this vision board. Some say fun decorating, uh, some talk about dreams. Uh, there's words talking about getting away and exploring, living your best life. The overall theme uh, of this board is, is the words and the words having action. Now you may be looking at this vision board and also noticing that there are very few images. In this next example, we can, you can see uh, an example that uses more images, but there's no wrong or right way to approach this exercise. So here is the second example, and you can see that this is a different approach from the vision board that we just saw in the last slide. It has a mixture of images and words. You can see that it takes more of a pictorial approach. And I actually created this vision board back in 2018. And there were multiple things that I was focused on. So in looking at some of the themes in this vision board, you can see travel, you can see joy, you can see growth, all things that um, I focused on back in 2018 slash 2019. So in creating your vision board, you might choose a few items to formulate which goals you will prioritize, prioritize or group together. So for example, you can see some of those related topics and goals as I mentioned earlier. To get started, you want to determine your focus. Do you want your board to reflect goals in all areas of your life or just one? There's no right or wrong answer, but some people find it helpful to focus on specific goals or areas like finances or travel or health or fitness or personal growth, family, home ownership or improvement. You can always make multiple boards based on your personal goals. One of the things you want to do is find photos, especially if you are a visual person. I'm a very visual person. And so finding photos makes this process a little bit easier. But if you decide that you don't wanna find photos, you can write a list of words down and choose words that uh, resonate with you. But again, find some pictures or photos that match the, the board focus or the focus of your goal 
and cut those photos from old magazines. Or if you are clutter free, you can also look for images online uh, and create a digital vision board by using Microsoft Word and Microsoft Paint. But anyway, look for those photos that inspire you and help you connect with your goals. So now I want to switch and show you a version of a real life vision board that I started creating for 2019 or excuse me, that I started creating for 2021. And so I'm going to switch my camera so that you can see my desktop. So bear with me just one moment. So what you should see now is the top of my desktop. And this is a brown paper bag that I used to create my vision board. You're probably asking yourself, what materials should I use? And so I want to show you a few of the materials that you should use. So let's look at these materials. Here are some markers. If you are want to draw some designs on your paper bag, you can use something as simple as Sharpies, markers, you can paint. I have a couple of individual Sharpie markers. You want to make sure that you grab some scissors to cut your images. You want to make sure that you have a pencil and some type of adhesive, whether that is some glue or a glue stick or a tape runner, you want to have something to adhere your images to. I started this out with a paper bag. Any standard paper bag will do. There's a nice little paper bag from Fry's. If you want to use copy paper to copy and paste images on to, you can. And then any type of magazine where you can simply flip through and find images that might inspire you. So now I'm going to flip over my vision board. And again, I've already started creating this. And so in looking at this vision board, you can see that I've done a combination approach of images and words. This was done on the background of a paper bag. And so you do see a little bit of uh, stamped images or stamped leaf image that I use, but you can easily take a Sharpie and draw your own leaves in. Renovation was a big topic for me this year, as well as, as you can see, being creative and incorporating more creativity in my year. You can use stickies 
or post-it notes to add words. And so here I have a couple of words like travel and volunteer. I want to be and continue to be active in uh, the community. I also cut out some images. These happen to be lemons. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And I talked about incorporating more art. As you can see, I have Be Creative here. And so I have Art is Not a thing, it's a way, go create, that I'll add to my vision board. Maybe I'll add that right there. But these are all images that are cut from a magazine. So I encourage you to be creative, brainstorm, uh, continue to look for things that inspire you. And with that, on that note of inspiration, I would like to play an excerpt from a podcast titled Habits for Happiness, where Dr. Tim Short talks specifically about using a vision board. Do you see your ideal life in your mind's eye? Did you create that world in your mind? Now it's time to create something tangible to represent it. This is important because you need to get it out of your head and onto paper, or at least onto your phone or laptop. There are a few ways of doing this, and I'll share a few with you now. I'd like you to pick the one that suits you best. One of the more popular and effective tools are known as vision boards. If you've never heard of vision boards, you should get ready to hear about them because they can be fantastically useful and fun to make. A vision board is one of the simplest but most effective strategies for creating and defining what happiness and a great life really means to and for you, as well as providing the elements of a guide for how to create happiness in and for your life. You can make your vision so clear that your anxieties become irrelevant. Working towards bold and positive goals can overpower fears of failure, uncertainty and doubts. Having a clear direction and purpose, it's like having your own internal GPS system. You wouldn't just hop in your car and drive without knowing where you're going to, would you? If you did, it wouldn't be surprising if you didn't get there, wherever there was. Rather, most of us know the destination we're heading towards and the best path we want to take to get there. Further, one of the many wonders of a GPS device is that if for some reason we take a wrong turn or get off track, the GPS helps us to redirect and find our way back on the best possible path. This is exactly what a vision board can help us with. It can clarify and define the destination we're heading towards and it can help us stay on track. Wouldn't that just be great? If you agree, then here are some things you definitely should try. Take some time to meditate on and imagine a great life, your great life. Picture your life going as well as it possibly could. You're doing what you love to do with those you love to be with. Try to encompass all the different domains of your life. These might include work or career, finances, personal health and well-being, family, friendships, social and recreational activities, and spiritual pursuits. Most importantly, you're healthy and happy, full of energy and motivation. It's important to be clear about your values. Our values act as guideposts, so if we don't have them or aren't clear about them, we can easily stray from the good path. Now, everyone's values are different, and there aren't necessarily any right or wrong values, but common ones include things like truth and justice, fairness and equity, peace and love. Give some consideration to security versus risk, change versus acceptance, achievement, knowledge, courage, 
adventure, compassion, curiosity, creativity, fun, love, forgiveness and loyalty. What, in essence, do you want to guide your life? Knowing this will make living this much easier and fulfilled. Focus as much as you can on what you want rather than what you don't want. Rather than what you might want to avoid or eliminate, focus on what you want to do and be. So your vision board shouldn't be an office desk with a big red cross through it. If you want to imagine a life where you're less tied to your desk, think about what that life looks like. Maybe there's a picture of you taking an evening walk through the park instead. To live your best possible life, you need to be your best possible self. You can start to determine when you are your best possible self by asking yourself questions such as, when do you feel most energised and most excited? When do you feel most you, at your most authentic and genuine? What brings you to life? And what do you most look forward to? This is the tricky part. Now, try to transfer this representation of your life onto paper. If you're artistic, try drawing or painting. A slightly easier approach is to cut pictures out of a magazine and stick them down. Pictures of island getaways and prestige cars tend to be very popular, but remember the joy that comes from meaningful pursuits, giving to and helping others, and from friendships and family. If you're not such a visual thinker, fear not. I'm not very good at picturing things in my mind, and I'm not that good at thinking too far ahead either. I'm much better at using words, so a strategy that works better for me, and might work better for you, is to describe your ideal life in language. Write it down as though you were describing a scene in a play or a movie. All the same suggestions still apply, so describe as much detail as possible and take into account all the various life domains. So as you can see, Dr. Tim Sharp has given us a few guidelines on how to create a vision board. And so with that in mind, I thought we would walk through a recap of the vision board goal setting workshop. And so we talked about what a vision board is. We talked about, or I talked about the materials that are necessary to create a vision board. There's no need to go out and buy a ton of materials. You can simply use uh, items that you have at home. If you have children, I encourage you to uh, raid their uh, toy chest. I'm sure you can find some markers, uh, pen, paper to create your vision board, some glue. With regard to using your vision board, if you have created a pictorial vision board uh, and using pen and paper and magazines, or you've created a digital board, you wanna make sure that you have that board someplace where you can view it on a regular basis so that you keep your visual goals in mind. If it was a vision board simply for brainstorming and you have identified a few goals uh, that you would like to focus on, again, you wanna make sure that you keep that list or you keep that reference somewhere where you can actually see it. And as you accomplish items or goals, you start checking those items off. If you need to readjust because you've, you have associated a time frame with those goals, again, you want to make sure that you adjust accordingly. And when you've accomplished those goals, check those items off. But you want to have a way to basically follow up on how close you are to achieving those goals. And if you did achieve those goals, celebrating your success, or if you had to readjust, uh, make those adjustments and then continue on moving forward towards the completion of that goal. I also teach a webinar 
titled Tips and Techniques for Goal Setting. And that goes into a little bit more, if you need some more structure, it talks a little bit more about goal setting and how you uh, start a goal from beginning to end using the SMART goal method. So if that's something that you're interested in, uh, please continue to pay attention to our foundation website uh, for the dates and times of that webinar. But with that said, I hope you have a great day. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and I hope to see you on a future webinar.